everyone. Welcome to BPI Europe TV. I'm Eden Turner and I am here today with Dr. Peter Leveson. He is Executive Director for Business Development at Paul Biotech. Good morning, Peter. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, good morning. So, uh, what has been the most successful innovation in upstream bioprocessing to date? And how has this innovation uh, impacted bioprocessing operations? Okay, thank you. Um, this may not seem like the sort of most likely answer, but um, in, in my mind, the, the latest generation of DAP filters has been a very powerful innovation for upstream processing, because um, as bioprocessing trends have continued to evolve, you know, single-use technologies have started to become um, a, a very mainstream approach to drug manufacturers, particularly when they need to accommodate very shifting drug profiles. Yet, this presents a new challenge when you look at the clarification step, because in traditional stainless steel facilities, where people may be operating bioreactors of up to about 10,000 litres, then continuous centrifugation has been um, probably the, the, the mainstay approach. Um, and also some limited use of depth filtration. But the challenge with depth filtration is historically it dealt with cell densities of up to about 20 million cells per mil. But with recent developments in, in the biotech space with increased cell densities and higher titers, we're now um, being faced with processes where cell densities may be 30 million cells per mil. And a consequence of that and, and changes to, uh, in single use means that people are moving their bioreactor volumes down to say 2,000 litres. And when you get to a 2,000 litre scale, centrifugation doesn't become um, the most attractive proposition. It is quite expensive to install. It is uh, a capital item of equipment, and it really doesn't lend itself to single use applications. So depth filtration starts to become the method of choice, but there was then a requirement to improve depth filters. So there have been advances in depth filtration in the last um, two to three years, um, where it, new designs of depth filters have been developed with new uh, depth filtration media, an example being the Paul Stacks Max platform. Um, and these advanced depth filters will enable you to handle you know, feed streams with cell densities in excess of 30 million cells per mil. So that really has been a tremendous enabler to um, advance um, upstream processing and hopefully um, will enable uh, a very flexible platform for processes going forward. So. Brilliant. Um, and I suppose same question for uh, downstream processing. Uh, what do you think has been the most successful innovation there and uh, what have been its impacts on the bioprocessing operations? Okay, so, so downstream is a, a slightly different situation, I would say, in that there really hasn't been um, any uh, really notable innovations in, in how you do downstream processing. Um, the, 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 the process, the unit operations that are done downstream have remained pretty well uh, constant over I don't know, the last 10, 20 years probably. Um, yes, there's slight differences in modalities, in different types of chromatography products, in, in different types of filters, but the basic train of unit operations uh, remains pretty constant. But I think it's more the integration, the ability to, to take one unit operation and connect it directly to the next unit operation. And that's really been enabled with single use where um, one can, can, can introduce aseptic connectors like the Presto uh, connectors that we offer, the various single use manifolds that can be designed to meet the requirements of the process. And, and that connectivity is, is probably the the area, if you like, of innovation. Maybe innovation is not quite the, the right word, but it's sort of incremental improvement to, to enable you to, to do things in a, a, a more streamlined and, and, and simplified manner. Fantastic. And uh, have these in innovations uh, made integration between upstream and downstream uh, easier, um, more useful, efficient, streamlined? Well, yes, I would say they have. Um, you know, traditionally batch processing was, was the, the sort of modus operandi and they are inherently more disconnected 
their, their step by step operations. And, you know, as I mentioned, you know, in the upstream, more effective clarification um, with these advanced depth filters gives you a flexible solution. And, and, and having the ability to, to, to be able to handle and, and process the contents of the bioreactor in, in a more efficient way enable you to then integrate with the downstream process. And the downstream process, you know, can be done um, continually, either through a continuous process or a semi-continuous process, you know, the so-called hybrid operations. And I think what people are now doing is looking at where are the real pinch points and bottlenecks in their process, and then looking to address them bit by bit by, by changing the way that a certain unit operation is done to optimize the overall productivity uh, of the process. And I think that's really how people are making the efficiencies we're seeing. Yes, I see. Um, and uh, so what improvements still need to be made in, in upstream, for example? Okay, so I think um, one, of, one of the challenges um, with upstream processing is, is the use of um, perfusion systems. There's uh, a lot of um, interest in uh, bringing perfusion systems fully into the com commercial space. And we've seen a lot, of, a lot of interest and a lot of new processes being developed in perfusion over the recent two or three years. But perfusion, by its nature, does require delivery, the generation delivery of a, a very continuous feed stream. And that does require um, cell retention uh, devices and cell retention technology. And whilst there are uh, technologies available which work and, and are, are widely used, um, I think there's still concerns about the robustness and the consistency of that clarification. So really, we, we do need to come up with a, a very robust, very reliable cell retention technology, which enables you to run a perfusion bioreactor for, for many weeks, knowing that every single minute of every day, you're getting a consistent feed coming out of that bioreactor. Um, subject obviously to the, to the slight variability of the, the, the living system that you're dealing with, but enables you to have a consistent feed going on to the downstream processing steps. So I think that's still a, a gap that you know, it's partially solved, but it's not fully addressed. And uh, following on from that, uh, what improvements do you think need to be made to the downstream? Um, I, I think because we're now seeing more of these connected processes, th there's a, a need for real-time analytics and control. Um, you know, there are advances being made, but we need to have uh, a real portfolio of rapid online and line um, analytics so that you know what is going on in your process in real time. Because if you're connecting things, then you need to know what's what's happening. And although we are seeing advances and we're seeing new techniques coming out all of the time, I think there's still a way to go. I imagine the next five years will be quite uh, innovative. Uh, with many new product introductions coming out uh, as we go further down. Uh, what would you say are the next generation biomanufacturing facilities um, and what improvements and advancements do you think they offer? Um, I think with the, the sort of widespread adoption of single use with these smaller facilities which need to be quite flexible, then modular designs are, are coming online where um, you can build a, a system, a facility, literally within one or more modules. And these modules are, are pre-assembled, literally craned into place uh, on your site and, and set up into operation very quickly. And these really do give a, a great deal of flexibility to the end user. Um, it's much faster to, to implement. Once it's installed and, and operational, you can rapidly interchange and interconnect various components within the module. Um, and also, if you want to scale up your process, rather than scaling up, you simply buy another module and scale out. So um, I, I think that really does give you um, a, an awful lot of flexibility. And I think that's an advancement we'll see growing uh, over the, the coming years. Um, and the other area, of course, is digitalization. Um, you know, with uh, the new 
uh, automation platforms coming out with the desire to interconnect processes, with the need to have um, online or atline uh, analytics, then you will be generating mega amounts of data, much more data, I think, than we really can comprehend. And that will need to be managed, it will need to be um, stored, it will need to be analysed. Um, and you really ideally want um, uh, real time analytics of the data, because if you can take it to the, 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 the next logical extension, it becomes real time release. If, if you can generate data which is validated uh, and is absolutely accurate and precise in real time, then there is no reason why you can't do real time release or certainly shorten the time for what they said in certain critical tests. So I do think that really is the essence behind uh, Industry 4.0 um, that, that we hear a lot about these days. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, there, there's, there's been um, sort of proven experiences in other industries uh, and other sectors completely. And I think, you know, the aviation industry, um, where there's an awful lot of data generated in aircraft, which is generated in real time when they're you know, thousands of miles away from their home base. So, you know, there are uh, lessons and, and um, best practices from other industries that we can adopt within biotech. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your insights today. This has been an interview with Dr. Peter Levison, Executive Director of Business Development at Paul Biotech for BPI Europe TV. Thank you. Thank you.